Okay, so I have a question for you. Imagine a world where the government starts paying you a salary just for being alive. What would you do? Hmm. I'd spend it on clothes, shoes, <laughs> junk food. I'd probably go on like a, a week's long lazy streak. I'll spend money like crazy. I wouldn't even... Sound too good to be true? Well, let's add some more details. Imagine the check is for somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500 every month. Imagine you get paid even if you already have a job. Imagine you can spend the money however you want, no strings attached. And imagine it's considered an inalienable human right, like access to water or voting. Now, this is actually a real idea. Economists call it the universal basic income. And they estimate that to make it happen in America, it would cost the government around $3 trillion every year. That's almost as much as the United States spends a year on everything. OK, now imagine a clock. Uh, it doesn't have any numbers on it yet, but it's the clock counting down to the day a universal basic income becomes a reality. The day we all get paid just for being alive. thing is, when we asked people this question, they all agreed about one thing. Would I quit my job? I don't think I'll quit. I would just buy myself more stuff, but I wouldn't quit my job or anything. I don't know. I, I, I'd get really bored if I didn't have anything to do. I wouldn't want to... You'd do something with the money, obviously. You'd yeah, around, but like, you'd, you'd get bored. So people would keep working, and to be honest, that's just as well. Because high school economics tells us that capitalism, the whole market economy thing, is based on the idea of work. You need people to make things just as much as you need people to buy them. When technology improved after World War II, productivity began to increase, and we've been enjoying the benefits ever since. If we all got paid a basic income and just quit our jobs, well, no work no economy. Now today more and more of us are lucky enough to find jobs and careers that we love, but pictures like this show us that for the majority of people in modern history, work has been a necessity. A mindless, repetitive necessity. Which to be honest, is a bit of a shame, because it wasn't supposed to be this way. Technology was supposed to get better and more efficient and free us all from work, free us to live a life of leisure. And these aren't the fanciful dreams of a sci-fi writer. They're the theories of one of the most important economists of the 20th century. In 1930, in the depths of the Great Depression, he predicted that by the year 2030, we'd all be working just three hours a day, maybe fewer. Well, with just 15 years before that date, it feels like we're working more hours, not fewer. Which is ironic, really. We've become trapped by the very thing that was supposed to set us free. And yet, slowly but surely, Keynes's prediction is starting to come true. Robots work 24 hours a day for free. They don't take vacations, they don't take maternity or paternity leave. There's an economic inevitability to all of this. Last year, an Oxford University study calculated that 47% of American jobs are at a high risk of being automated in the next 10 to 20 years. Now, a lot of people think technology will create new jobs to replace the old ones, and that is likely. But no one seems to think there'll be enough work for everyone. Keynes called it technological unemployment. But hey, it's not so bad. Because machines are so cheap, the cost of almost everything from food to phones will go down. And we'll have an amazing opportunity to redefine how we spend our lives. Freed from the nine to five. Now, if I told you that you never had to work again if you didn't want to, and you never had to worry about money, all of your bills are paid. What would you do with the time? I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna live. Like, I'm gonna have no stress. Give me more time to serve people. Give me more time to be of service. Give me more time to be productive. I would like probably just like make sure I go to college and have like a better education. I could go play basketball again. I could start traveling the world again instead of staying in one place because I have a job. 
That would be wonderful, right? That's wonderful. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but all that doesn't explain why this clock is still ticking. There's one last piece of the puzzle we've missed. Yes, our market economy relies on people making things and people buying them, but we always forget one thing. The producers and the consumers, they're the same people. If people can't work, they can't earn money. And if they can't earn money, they can't buy anything. And if they can't buy anything, it's the end of capitalism as we know it. Unless, unless we can find a way for people to keep spending money, even if they don't earn any? Experiments in a universal basic income are already being run all over the world. On the other side is a potentially amazing future. For a start, 45 million Americans would be lifted out of poverty almost overnight. For many more of us, it would be the chance to pursue our passions and dreams without worrying about paying the rent. It does have its problems though, questions we haven't figured out the answers to yet. But as long as a future with mass technological unemployment is likely, a future where most people don't have jobs, the day when we all get paid just to exist is all but inevitable. <laughs>